Thank you, Sever and Giora. I have a few short questions for each of you. And then we'll take questions from the floor. Giora, let's start with you. You are uh, telling us, it's not the first time I've heard from you, that you're expecting something from politicians. But on the other hand, you're also an advisor to the government uh, formally, and you knew, and you know how decisions are made. Do you really think that under these current circumstances, it is realistic to expect politicians to act differently and say what should be or shouldn't be? Or will you keep hearing statements like the former minister of, of uh, finance, Yuval Steinitz, who said the strategic threat has gone down, and that is why the budget needs to be cut. And the second question has to do with the American aid that we both talked about. Uh, maybe toys is not a good word, but an F-35, there's a long debate over it, and the Israeli Air Force definitely has uh, some credit uh, to do, that has to do with this project. But we were told this week that uh, the Americans are getting us yet another grant, yet another um, benefit is a toy. It's nothing more than a toy. Perhaps it is useful, but I'm talking about uh, this uh, helicopter uh, aircraft. And uh, maybe this is just, uh, uh, we're not just too spoiled because we think that we have three and a half billion that are just a given in our budget and we can do whatever we want with them. Aren't we spoiled? I'll start with the second question. First of all, the American budget, the $3.5 billion uh, aid, will end in 2017 officially. And uh, usually they extend it, but nobody's promising that. And it has a lot to do with uh, various variables, such as the financial situation in the United States. And we maybe have to start thinking about what would happen if the budget will not perhaps stop. But maybe the Americans will want to cut it, and uh, we'll have to uh, prepare already now. These three and a half billion dollars, again, this is not a gift. And the decision as to what should be purchased is an Israeli decision at the end of the day. And Israel buys from the United States the same things it cannot buy from anyone else. It's usually aviation platforms, aerial platforms, and various other things that are saving us money. And for each one of these uh, things, we can argue whether we could have used the money for something else. But I think that the history tells us that to this day, the decisions made in this aspect have proved themselves in each and every one of the major wars uh, that we had to participate in and where we needed better missiles and better aircraft than our enemies that are more accurate. It's not just part of our capability, it's part of our deterrence capability. And I think that I don't, and I don't think we are buying anything we don't need. But again, I want to say that if you buy these sort of uh, fueling uh, airplanes, and that gives us the ability to fly uh, further. But these are one of these uh, decisions that the government needs to reach. Uh, is this vital, or can we decide to do something else with the money? And as I've said, and this, of course, uh, has to do with the first question, we can perhaps not have this decision, this discussion, and then the result will be, and perhaps it's not so bad, that quite a few ministers, mostly finance ministers, but not just, they will say whatever they have to say, and we'll say at the end of the day what's really going to happen. If the defense budget, we reach an administrative decision from one minute to the next to cut four billion shekels, and once there was such a cut, then later the defense uh, system comes to the prime minister and shows him what, the most, what Israel will no longer have because of this cut. And they're not trying to scare anybody, and these aren't imaginary scenarios. They're just going to say, we will not be able to do one, two, three, four, and the prime minister usually says, okay, I can't take the responsibility for something like that, and the budget returns. So if this is something that we can live with, that's okay, that's good enough. But I don't think it allows for the same sort of discussion that really should be held, not for the 2013 budget, but definitely for the next few years. Sever, I have two short questions. Um, I'm a dedicated reader of your columns, much like me, and I already read a month ago what your position is. And I think that uh, because of Brodette and what had happened to it and how, to what extent it was implemented, and uh, when Steinitz uh, said his farewell to the office, he attacked the attempts of the uh, uh, security system to conceal information, and he uh, took pride in his ability to um, enforce 
his uh, regulations. And from what you see, do you think that the environment is now a little less toxic in this uh, uh, context? And can you uh, refer to the ideas that are being discussed now about shortening uh, the, um, the length of time that one goes to the army for? Thank you. As to the first question, I think that there is a great improvement in the uh, discourse and discussion between uh, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Security and the Ministry of Defense. I think there is definitely a great improvement and they discuss things a lot more. But uh, it is very unfortunate for the Minister of Finance, uh, Dr. Yuval Steinitz, uh, his predictions and forecasts that uh, once uh, the computer of the Ministry of Finance will connect to the computer in the Ministry of uh, defense, they will find uh, four or five uh, billion shekels uh, that are uh, in excess. Uh, that did not uh, turn out to be true. And I can say that now, based on my colleagues in uh, the accountant's office in the Ministry of Finance, there may be some irregularities, maybe there are some contracts that perhaps should have been signed differently, but it's not billions of shekels, certainly, and definitely not uh, many uh, billions. But here I would like to say one more thing about transparency because I think it has to be said. Between 2000, the last number I will say for last, between 2007 and 2012, the last year that we have data for the last five years, the total wages paid by the public civil system, which is the government, the national institutions, the local authorities address by almost 50 percent, 48 and a half percent. And I want to ask you, by how much did the wages paid or the wage component in the defense budget, by how much did that go up? Well, it went up by less than 20 percent, which means that annually the wages and salaries paid civil public went up by 6 percent, whereas the defense one went up by 3 percent per year. So. In the defense system, we're talking probably about certain cuts in the number of employees and uh, some sort of freeze of the real wages, whereas in the civil system, we're talking about a freezing in some way of the real uh, wages and a great increase and in growth in the number of workers and employees in the civil system. There are more teachers, there are more clerks, there are more social workers, there is a huge increase in the civil system in terms of employment and the non-military system. And this has to be taken into consideration. So when you ask someone, how is it that the defense budget has contributed its 1.5% to strengthening the country, in fact, then it's because mostly it had harnessed uh, its uh, wages. And that is why most of the drop is explained. So that has to do with both the first and second questions. Yes, I would like this transparency to be mutual. I want the figures that I said now to also be quoted here in there. So it doesn't sound like uh, we only hear one direction from the Ministry of Finance and there is no other statistics. As for the other side, this is a very uh, a big consideration, I think, that the military um, uh, period of time that you're in the military should go down. Uh, I think that it will contribute to the Israeli economy, but uh, this should be done at a time when there is economic growth and uh, economic uh, uh, success because we don't want to reach the European stage where a quarter or a third of the young people at army age are unemployed. We don't want our young to be unemployed. And I know that when people are in the army, I don't know if it's uh, implicit employment or unemployment. It depends on what you call it. But one of the main reasons why we don't have uh, young people uh, unemployed is because they are so be so well trained during their military service. So I think that uh, the government really has to take into consideration uh, the entire situation of the economy. It has to be done with together with everyone else.
I object to shortening the length of army service for a simple reason, and the, the reason is reserves. Because when we talk about issues of sharing the burden, of sharing the burden equally and recruiting the ultra orthodox, I'm not concerned about how difficult it is for a soldier to serve for three years, and not for the, not with the fact that they serve for three years or two and a half years. What real, what the real expense for the country, for the state, is is the reserves unit, a, a day of a reserve, a, for a, a reserve, to, the cost of a reserve soldier is 30 percent more than for a, for a regular soldier. A reserve soldier does not produce the yield that, a, that, that others do, so it does not contribute to, contribute to society, and I think that is the greatest distortion. People that are, people that do three years of military service and continue to serve for 30 days per year uh, for reserves and we cannot we can we, we cannot stop we cannot stop recruiting them because we need reserves soldiers in case of a war if in whether it's whether in an operation like desert or the, the, the pill, pillar of defense we have to be able to, re to recruit the reserves forces and this has to be we have to focus on focus our efforts on shortening the period of reserves and redu and and discharging soldiers at age third at age 35 instead of age 45 and i think that's the correct thing to do both socially and economically and i would not shorten the army service until that until that happens so you would say to re discharge the adult the fathers before the sons we have I'd like to thank my two partners for us in this session. They had very intelligent things to say. I'm sure that the continuation will be as, as interesting.